Everything that I'm trying to work on is to get to that point where I can just play at a professional level. I found out from my school that I'm able to graduate a year early. So within the next year, I would know for sure whether or not I could play at a college level, and then I'll be really close to getting to that step of playing for Team Canada. Well, I mean, that pink looks nice, but I don't think like that pink. I don't really like wearing dresses that much, but I guess I'm gonna have to. <laughs> but, like, I wanna, I wanna be there already. I wanna be in those classes and get into, like, better of a soccer team, which is really what I wanna do. It's been a dream for me. Just as a child, I never knew what I wanted to do because I never had any interest but soccer. I don't really remember when I first joined soccer because I was so young. But my grandpa, he's always loved soccer and he helped train me even when I didn't get to go to kids' practices. He would always make me kick against the wall and aim for like one little brick. If you pick a spot on that wall, you hit that every time, then you'll be able to do that on the field. You're gonna be able to hit it there. Those are the things that I try to tell them and because that's what I used to do up in Mission. We played in a residential school. Every day we'd be all kicking the ball against the gym wall and just every day that's how life became up there. Residential school was something negative and soccer was something positive for him and he focused on that. Just from like learning about residential school, it's made me feel more apart from everybody else, I guess, because they just didn't get how recent it was and how much it still impacts us on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, our grandparents went to residential school and we feel kind of like neglected, like we're not supposed to succeed in life. But with NIFA, it makes me feel like proud to be Indigenous. NIFA was created because we fell through the cracks. There was no select team program, no all-star teams, no opportunities to help our people dream again, to dream about making it into the higher levels of soccer in our country. I truly believe that and I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think a lot of our players should have made Team Canada already. And we're in our 30th active year with the women's program this year. And the term NIFA is synonymous with Indigenous soccer in Canada. We're the best Indigenous women's soccer players in the world. And we've proven that. But there's a bigger world out there. When NIFA won at the World Indigenous Games, I was seeing all these photos about it online and reading about it, and I was like, wow, this is so amazing. When I was a bit younger, I was pretty unconfident. As soon as you saw me playing sports, you could tell I didn't think I was very good. When I moved from House League Soccer in Campbell River, which is mainly Caucasian kids, and I moved into First Nations Soccer, I was pretty taken aback at how different it was. First Nations Soccer is generally pretty rough, and I remember when I first played, I was initially terrified. Dana would say to me, why are you being so unconfident? Just try your best and have fun. There's no reason you should be like that. And I said, yeah, okay, I will. That whole world opened up to me, and 
I realized that Vancouver Island First Nation soccer is huge. And all of those First Nations people who play in that community feel like family. It's all about soccer in our community and in my family it's been going for over 100 years. We have English ancestry dating back to my great-grandfather, Billy Thorne. He was one of the pioneers to bring the game to Vancouver Island. In the late 1980s, I played with the best players that Canada had to offer at the time. Professional players I played against. But then I played our native tournaments and seen our players. And a lot of our players had more natural talent and skill. As I got older and retired, I became a coach. And in a sense, soccer did keep me alive. I've had my own social challenges when I was young. And through the years, I've seen a lot of people leave this world too young, whether it was uh, suicides or alcohol and other drugs. We see a lot of the negative stuff still, but you have to love your people to help them. And through my sport and through my job and through others I work with, we try to help them. You know, we're still carrying on. You know, and uh, with our women's program, we have this uh, under-19 team, which is a new team. And it's a challenge, but at the same time, it's bringing us to the next level. Excited. Kind of nervous, so it has been financially difficult to go to Cuba and be able to have that money to do that, even though we're already all paying for different things ourselves. And me, myself, I don't have that much time to work because I'm doing soccer. So it just kind of like cross paths, I guess, between soccer and getting my financial needs in order to do soccer. You get one of each, her name's what both? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Does you get one of each? Okay. And I'll put one of her names on here. I don't have a million dollars to have a two-week training camp and bring them all together then play. There's 650 First Nations in this country and everyone's different. There's a, something special about protocols that are real similar, especially the spirituality part. Not so much squalling means one mind and one voice because we're all different, but respecting each other is important. <laughs> First thing I, I wanted to acknowledge uh, where we're at in our culture protocol. We're in a country, Cuba. For me, it's a real privilege to travel with the sport I love. In your own lives, you've all grasped the, the sport. And you're here because you're a gifted soccer player. You're talented and we're gonna be playing a national level team. We're going to be playing two big games in Havana. The result is going to be up to us, but this is the start of something, something that's so important for our program. It's the next step onto our national program. It's so important that you have strong self-esteem, be prideful, know what's right and wrong, and, and um, believe that you can, you can do it. So, just be part of the team. Get to know each other. Yeah. Love, get to know each other. Get to the ball, attack the ball.
Carry run it down. Okay, this time, first pro partner's gonna run to the ball. Turn, yes. Back, again. So water, breakfast is important, and the rest before. Okay, and again, it's all about getting ready. At the mall. I do think it's a really big deal for us to be in Cuba. I know that a lot of us will make up the next Team Indigenous Canada, but it's really difficult to play in 40 degree weather against incredible athletes who are already fully acclimatized. The girls really need to believe in themselves, but some of them will be a little scared. And I think I'm definitely going to be a little nervous. I wanted to talk about uh, you people fulfilling a dream of mine. I've always dreamed that at some time our First Nations players will compete at the top level. I hope that this week is the week that we beat one of those uh, national teams from, uh, which is of course from Cuba, and then it's onward and upward. And it's going to be hot out there, so you're going to have to suck it up. It's, uh, the heat will get to you. I just ask that you do your best and give all you have. And if you work hard and dedicate yourself to what you want to do, it will get you there. It's the hardest thing when you lose, but due to the climatization, the jet lag and the heat, the girls were unable to perform in the first half. We have another game tomorrow and we have to get technically better. The ball was really bouncy, but uh, we still have to get technically better using the whole field. It feels pretty like bad to lose, but then we weren't expecting to win. We weren't expecting to, like, of course we wanted to and we tried to, but the heat and especially on turf, our feet were like on fire. And I also think we didn't really, I don't know, we didn't really come together. The first half we were getting really negative, which wasn't good and it put us down. And I think that's what might have caused the second goal too. I don't know about you guys, but I was just constantly having to move. We were panicking the whole time and getting mad. We also want to talk about communication too. 
like on the field. Um, I found that it's only me and Amber that are always yelling. I don't hear anybody else. Yeah, I said it's hot and we're all feeling like the same heat and we're all tired. But if you see like your liney busting their ass to the ball, like you should be expect yourself to do the same as them. Like we all came here to do the exact same thing. We all need to put the exact same effort in. It's our last game and we want to win this one. We did not come here to lose. Teamwork, teamwork on three, one, two, okay. Teamwork on three, one, two, three, teamwork! <laughs> Blame, but at the end of the game, I almost kind of felt like tearing up. I was I was definitely overwhelmed by just the relief, and it was like a flood of emotions because the tension was built up for that game. It, it's definitely very empowering to win, and it makes you want to keep getting better and better. There's like a new connection almost made, and I think that it's it's kind of like a new family feeling. We came together as one. It feels pretty amazing to win, especially when you go home and then people know about it and all those people that helped me get here. Feels like all the support and everything just paid off when we won. Okay, you guys, line up, get in the soccer teams. We need to bring in the goals. Despite all the challenges we have in our communities, we're a part of some of the solution of finding health and wellness. Gives our young people the dream again in our sport. And let's play some soccer. Bye, guys. To see those young six to 12 year olds that are just coming up. Well, just say the games are part of the battle the learning to um, to learn life's lessons through soccer and to learn how to win in life. What happened? Yeah, it must have fell on that, right? Can you do that? Okay, I think we'll be okay. You better get a, get some water, okay? With Braden, yeah. 